What's up, sweaties? It's Josh Nevin. I'm standing here with Jacob Batalon hey. from Spider-Man Homecoming. And you're in the comic book land. This is right. the, the home of sweat. It's one of my favorite comics of all time. The artwork is crazy amazing. Holy freak. I could see you in this outfit. I feel like this is my joint now. Oh, this looks so bad. I'm like, I'm gonna buy this. That's a done That's, deal, right? Yes. i load you up with some flavor. I feel like I've just absorbed so much information in like five minutes. It's I know, funny. I talk a lot. Hello and welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. This is the daily show where we bring you all the latest in the world of movies, plus a little bit of insight into what it all means. Hosting the show today is the handsomest guy this side of Tab Hunter, Mark Ellis. Welcome one and all to Collider Movie Talk, ladies and gentlemen. We got up at the butt crack of dawn here on Wednesday to bring you guys a movie talk for Wednesday before we all hightail it down San Diego away for this year's Comic-Con extravaganza. We got a lot of cool stories to talk about and maybe a little bit of a Comic-Con preview too. And I didn't show up alone, although I will be doing a lot of the talking here today. Joining us on the panel, Mr. Mark Riley. Well, Mr. Ellis, what a pleasure to be here on this Comic-Con. Con day going out to Comic Con, but this this doesn't feel right. Uh oh! There's the hair. <laughs> There's the hair. There's oh. the oh wow! Got to get ready for Comic Con, folks. Let's do it. Well, Michael Keaton, look out! Yeah, Harry Nemiroff is also here, fresh from I her shake of creation. I am so excited. You're right. I <laughs> made a big creation trip, and I loaded up on all this stuff to get me through the week in a healthy way. And I got my Collider branding on. I am so freaking excited <laughs> to go to San Diego. I can't stand it. She is nothing if not a company woman, Perry Nemiroff, <laughs> and over here is the one, the only Mister David Griffin. <laughs> If you want to see my number retired in Ballroom 20, come join me. I will be there all <laughs> week long. I will be there Wednesday, tonight, Wednesday night, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I'm my telling God. you, man, all the effort you have put into Ballroom 20 over the years at the San Diego Convention Center, there should be a Griffin jersey <laughs> hanging in the rafters for when opponents come in there. <laughs> you see that guy, and you get intimidated because nobody covers Ballroom 20 like this guy right over sure. here. Well, we're all very excited <laughs> to be down there. And one of the reasons that we get really juiced to go to Comic-Con is to see all of you guys that we have a whole new way to get the fan experience of Collider Movie Talk. That's to tape it live in front of you guys. We're gonna be doing just that tomorrow. Thursday afternoon. We're going to kick off the taping at 2 p.m. You probably want to get there a few hours before then. To get in line, the first 150 to 200 people will get to watch us tape an episode of Movie Talk at the American Comedy Company in the Gaslamp District in San Diego. And you can get your wristbands around 1 to 1.30 is when they'll be handed out. Then we'll get you guys into the cool air conditioning. Hopefully there's air conditioning. I've done stand-up there. I believe there is air conditioning. It's going to be a lot of fun. And that's not the only thing that we're doing for you guys on Thursday. They, later on that evening, we'll have our Collider and Schmozno meet and greet. That's going to be 6 to 8 p.m. at the Fox Sports Bar and Grill, which is right next to the actual convention center. So if you're there, seeing a lot of cool stuff all day Thursday, come on over and have a burger with Griffin, have a hot dog with Riley, have a <laughs> protein shake with Perry. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. That no. hour is for beer. Oh, let's very, make that clear. Very good. Okay, that so have girl. a blue moon with Perry. Hey, then. that's right. There I think you, you know what I enjoy. So I don't accept open beers from strangers, but I do appreciate the gesture. Well, with all that out of the way, let's move into our first official story. And oh my God, our friend Sidebar either already made it to San Diego or is still drunk from the night before. Probably going with the latter here. Don't worry, we still got stories for you guys. And our first one is one that we may get some more details about this weekend at Comic-Con. And that would be that Warner Brothers has announced that they have two movie spots on their upcoming schedule of 2020 for DCEU movies. They're untitled as of right now. We have no idea what they are, but we do know the dates. That's going to be February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day in yeah. 2020. And then later on in the heat of the summer, June 5th. 2020 as well as an untitled dc animation film for june 1st 2018. so these are all additions to their normal slate and so we think that they may expand upon this news when they do their presentation in hall h on saturday but in the meantime david griffin you love this kind of stuff as do i let's speculate as to what these movies could be on february 14th and june 5th of 2020. well 
I was about to go to some like news segment or something. <laughs> well, uh, it does seem like, I mean, the most uh, obvious choices are probably we're going to get, you know, like Wonder Woman 2 and the Batman. Now, that February 14th release date, not trying to stereotype anything here, but that's a perfect release date for Wonder Woman 2 because it's a popular time to take your lady out on a date or, or your man on I'll the date that. or I'll whatever you're into. Sure. And it's, it's a popular daytime. And I think Wonder Woman is loved. I know like my, my parents enjoyed it by, by women and men alike. It's a perfect time to take somebody out, get a dinner, grab a drink, and go see Wonder Woman 2. I don't think the Batman is going to come out on February 14th. That's just my guess. But I think it's going to get the Batman. It's just surprising, though, that we're going to have to wait till 2020. But it does make sense. We learned that Matt Reeves is not using the Ben Affleck script. I don't know if the new script's done or if they're writing it right now. The whole will Ben Affleck show up or not. I mean, we'll see what happens there. I'm sure he's probably going to be in the movie. But we have to wait and see. So I'm glad that they're not rushing this. That's still a few years away. So I'm glad they're not rushing the new Batman movie. That's I'm, right. I'm happy I, to see that. I, 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 I tend to think that it is a bit of a stereotype. And I think it might be a little too on the nose for, too my, much? for my really, liking. That was too much? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to like, you know. No, 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 no not you. <laughs> oh, I mean, <laughs> Warner Brothers. if I had a lady, I'd, I'd take her out to go see Wonder Woman I would Woman certainly take, a, take my lady out to see Wonder Woman 2 on any of the 365 days. But <laughs> I think that opening Wonder Woman 2 on Valentine's Day, I think it does a little bit of a disservice to the great film that Wonder Woman was and mm. the bright light in the DCEU that it is now if it's opening in february i have no problem with that and if it happens to be a friday that is valentine's day i get that but it just it, it feels like you're shortchanging what wonder woman can be mm -hmm. if you're putting it on a valentine's day which is primarily known for romantic comedies and that sort of thing coming mm -hmm. out so i think you're doing a disservice to what wonder woman has already brought us i'm not going to die on the cross for it i'm not going to get up in arms and protest about it but i think that you're cheapening the brand there a little bit now if batman opens on february 14th I know that there's a lot of men and women that would love to go on a date to see that movie. Plus, we did have a Batman movie open in February this year. It was Lego Batman, mm -hmm. but it was damn good. Yeah. And February has proven recently that it is no longer the studio dumping ground that we have assumed it is in years past. So I think either film could obviously work well there. I would peg Wonder Woman 2 at the June 5th. That's what I would bet. Mm -hmm. I would bet that that is the June 5th release. They, that's very close to what they had with this past summer, this ongoing summer. That's my estimated somewhat educated guess but perry do you see things differently than i mm, i don't think so i'm definitely leaning towards wonder woman 2 and the batman having these two release dates i don't know in terms of which would come on which date I think I personally, at least, I side with you. I, I don't think it's the smartest idea to put a Wonder Woman movie on February 14th, just for the reasons that you named. Hey, but guys, take your lady to see something you know she wants to see. I it's, mean, don't I don't do take any personal offense to it being a lady, but I can understand why people would connect the dots that way. And also, Wonder Woman already proved that it can make a ton of money at the beginning of the summer, so don't you want to repeat that? And you're right, February is not a dumping ground anymore. And we talk about this every single year when the summer season, not that summer is starting in February, but when the summer season <laughs> seems to be starting earlier and earlier every year. We also have April. That was a huge, huge box office month. Batman vs Superman came out, made a ton of money when it opened. Maybe Warner Brothers is trying to play the game even further and push that into February because in February we don't have any major releases. If they release something like Batman in the second weekend of February, it could not only clean up opening weekend, but it could have legs and legs and legs and that's what makes the big difference. I mean, we can look at Wonder Woman right now, which is just crushing it across the board and is making an insane amount of money because it was released at an opportunity time that's right mm -hmm. Riley do you think that there could be any other movie that we're just that we're so excited about Wonder Woman and Batman that we could be missing an obvious answer like this could be Gotham City Sirens or this could be another Suicide Squad movie where do you think these movies are gonna land yeah I I absolutely agree I think it's a movie that we haven't mentioned yet we're just going Batman mm -hmm. Wonder Woman I mm -hmm. think put money on it Wonder Woman will be on that June date that'll be three years almost to the date I'm listening I'm actually putting money on this go put speak. money on that I think that's what's gonna happen the Batman I don't know yet I don't think they have a targeted release date yet because Matt Reeves is coming on he threw the script away he's starting over my money right now is the flash and I think about the flash because there we've heard reports that Robert Zemeckis might be up for it we've heard Different reports that they're honing in on a director. Mm. Almost seven, eight months ago, they, they announced that they're doing a page one rewrite. Maybe they're moving forward on that. I look at Deadpool as an example of how this could work because Deadpool mm -hmm. came out 
on February 12th. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it killed. That was the Valentine's Day movie that I went to with my lady. We didn't do the Fifty Shades, whatever the hell that movie was. We did Deadpool. And I look at what they're doing with The Flash with Ezra Miller in that role being really funny, really kind of charming and quirky. And I hear it's a, maybe a buddy movie with Cyborg. What if they did do The Flash? What if that's the movie that we're going to hear at Comic-Con later uh, Saturday, this Saturday coming up? So my money's on The Flash, or you mentioned it, Mark, Gotham City Sirens. I think that's another good place to put it because David Ayer, maybe he's coming out. Again, Deadpool was rated R. Maybe David Ayer, are they going to make an R-rated movie? Could they do an R-rated movie in DC? And could it be, I don't think maybe Gotham City Sirens, but maybe Suicide Squad 2 as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but... My, I'm, I'm betting, I'm going with the Flash. For some reason, feels good to say the Flash. And, I mean, it would make sense as far as a Valentine's Day campaign, if you want to call it that, goes because, like as Riley said, Deadpool had a very funny, almost anti-Valentine's Day campaign. I think the Flash could have at least a nice sense of humor with that holiday, mm. and so I, I think that could make more sense than I just. The more I think about, it, I love that June fifth release date for Wonder Woman too so much, and we don't know what the future holds for Batman, but it could be a February release date. It could be something entirely different. We'll have to wait and see that they make any announcements in that vein this Saturday. Well, speaking of comic book movies, we enjoy talking about that from time to time. And one of them in the Marvel Cinematic Universe just got a big shot in the arm from a casting standpoint. That would be Ant-Man and the Wasp has announced that Walton Goggins, the actor, is joining the crew that is already stacked to the deck. It's opening July 6th of next year. And this is only the latest big move, if you will, for Goggins, who is also going to be joining Alicia Vikander in the Tomb Raider reboot. Mm. And he just wrapped production on Maze Runner, The Death Cure. Mm. Ooh, I'm glad I found the cure for that. So Walter <laughs> Goggins is on the cast now of Ant-Man and the Wasp. Riley, I'll go to you first on yeah. this one. What do you think about this casting? Uh, it's great. It's great casting. Anytime you get an actor like this to join a Marvel movie, it's always a win. Marvel just, what do they do? They cast so well. We got uh, Michael Douglas coming back and of course Paul Rudd and uh, Evangeline, uh, Evangeline Lilly. I cannot wait for this movie now. I wish I knew what he was playing, but uh, Walter Goggins comes in. Walton Goggins comes in. I kept saying Walter all day. We had that problem, I think, earlier. Anyway. <laughs> he, I love how you threw all of us under the bus. Yeah, you're no, like, we, you're we, like, the royal we, Walter, me. We keep doing me, that. Me, me, me. Um, <laughs> he always seems to come in and play a heavy, you know? So I don't know. Can you speculate that because it's kind of, I don't know, you say he's a villain, is he going to be a villain? I would love to see him come. You know, Ant-Man was kind of the heist caper film. Is he another friend of Paul Rudd's that he kind of ran circles with, you know, mm -hmm. doing all the, the crime? Maybe is, is he getting out of prison or something? I'm just wildly speculating right now, but it's bottom line is he's a fantastic addition to this cast. The guy's got great range, a vast array of characters he could play. Perry, how do you see this shaping up? Give me a minute while I change Walter to Walton in my notes. I think it's because I copied them and they were like that in the show notes. I know his name is Walton, but uh, no, that's seriously. exactly what it's, I did. It's an autocorrect issue. I, yep, I sent out the show notes. I do believe there was an autocorrect and I changed it to Walter. All right. Glad Apologies. Big fan of sweetness. Yes. No matter how you say or spell his name, though, I mean, there's going to come a time, I think, in the very near future when nobody is accidentally saying Walter because he is incredible. I mean, over the years, it's not like he's a new actor that just came on the scene and had a big thing. He has been working on high quality stuff, whether it's film or TV, for so many years now. And I just love him in anything I see. I mean, we don't know anything about the role he's playing. Yeah. I feel like my mind would go towards some sort of villainous character for him, but it really could be anything, and he's capable of doing anything. I mean, the recent things that come to mind is he is so good in Hateful Eight, and mm. then uh, Vice Principals, too, because I had covered that when it came out at South by Southwest, and that show just shocked me like the the extent that they'll go to with the comedy and that and he handles it so well he's a stand-up guy in person too he's a great interview i'm just so happy for anything i see him cast in at this point and marvel is definitely becoming really well known for putting together some uh, really like untouchable ensembles those marvel movies have some of the best casts i think i've ever seen and mm -hmm. ant-man in particular even the first one i mean michael pena ti they added randall park to this one and now walton goggins uh 
Griff. So where do you stand on the whole Walter Walton situation? And what sort of character do you think Goggins is going to be playing in Ant-Man and the Wasp? Well, Walton Goggins, and I, we go way back. I'm talking way back to the Shield days with Michael Chiklis on mm. FX, one of FX wow. first, you know, premiere shows. I mean, he is just the man when it comes to acting. I think his TV resume is a little bit bigger than his. I mean, in terms of like leading roles. Also, if you want to watch him in a good role, watch Justified with Timothy Oliphant. Mm -hmm. He is one. I mean, I think mm -hmm. Adam just, or uh, Cody's gave me a Adam Thoda Cody gave me a thumbs up <laughs> back there. He is one of the best villains alongside with him and Timothy Oliphant. Their chemistry. He's fantastic. He's so good. He's got that southern draw. I mean, he's just in a like, Perry and Hateful Eight. He's incredible. Anything that he's in, he's good. And like you said, Marvel. The cast they put together, I think, elevates some of the films that aren't even maybe that great. Or memorable for that matter. Like I love the Marvel movies, maybe like a uh, Doctor Strange, which I really enjoyed. I feel like I forget about it mm -hmm. after a while, but I do remember the actors and the incredible performances that they put forward. They always cast perfectly. So yeah, it's a great addition to the film. That's right. And so maybe he gets to be on stage at Comic Con this weekend too, because Ant Man and the Wasp, like I said, comes out July sixth of next year. So maybe there's footage. They've been shooting it for a little bit now. Mm -hmm. We don't know. I don't want to get too ahead of myself. We got a few days to go before that happens. But this Friday we have some movies opening up. We talked about. Dunkirk yesterday. There's two more films that are in wide release this week, and the first one we'll talk about is Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets in the 28th, 28th century. Dear God, that's far in the future. Special <laughs> operatives Valerian and Laureline work together to maintain order throughout the human territories. When a dark force threatens the peaceful city, Valerian and Laureline must race against time to identify the menace that also jeopardizes the future of the universe. Whew! Then we also have Girls Trip. There's a little bit less <laughs> at stake in Girls Trip, but it looks to be hilarious because best friends Ryan, Sasha, Lisa, and Dina are in for the adventure of a lifetime when they travel to New Orleans for the annual Essence Festival. Along the way, they rekindle their sisterhood and rediscover their wild side by doing enough dancing, drinking, brawling, and romancing to make the big city blush. Well, Girls Trip certainly sounds more familiar to our weekend at Comic-Con we're about to have, <laughs> but let's start with Valerian. You guys looking forward to that? David, do you think that Valerian is your most anticipated of the weekend, or is that spot reserved for Dunkirk or Girls Trip? M uh, not Girls Trip, um, <laughs> but uh, even though I love me, I love Queen Latifah, no, and Jada Pinkett, but no, I am definitely reserving my number one spot for Dunkirk, but I'm excited about Tina Valera, and I went to go see at the uh, AMC Dolby Theater here in Burbank, California. Uh, when you go see Spider-Man, they show like a three or four minutes, especially the opening scene uh, from Valerian. It just, it looks, it looks incredible. It's beautifully shot. It reminds me a lot of The Fifth Element, you know, which is one of my favorite movies. Uh, yeah. I, I, I like Luc Besson. I like his, his vision. Even Lucy, which was a little all over the place. I still like parts of that. He's an interesting director. I'm, I'm never quite sure what I'm going to see uh, when he puts out a new film. So for me, I'm definitely going to go see Valerian. I'm also going to see Dunkirk. I'm putting my money down on both films. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw Dunkirk in the review Collider and Schmoes up, and it's just like, I, that movie blew me away. You know what movie you're getting into, because that is a harrowing war adventure. But if you're talking about Valerian, it's something that just looks so fun and adventurous and colorful and bright and space operatic that has nothing to do with a tied together universe or franchise. We just get to enjoy a new story. So I'm super excited for Valerian. and I am nervous that they sunk that much money into it because it's an expensive flick mm -hmm. and I don't know that the audience is going to be there. Hopefully it's really great and it catches fire and it keeps making money week to week to week. And I'm not selling short on Girl Strip yet either because like you mentioned, you have Queen Latifah and Jada Pinkett Smith. You also have Tiffany Haddish who's a buddy of mine and she's one of the funniest comics you will ever see live mm -hmm. on stage. So so Tiffany Haddish is playing in your town. Go check her out or go see her in Girls Trip. Now, Perry, you have Valerian in Girls Trip. I know mm -hmm. that you have seen Valerian, and you were pretty high on it. Um, not really. No, but you were not really high on Valerian at all. Um, I think in my review, I ended up giving it a 6 out of 10. And, you know, I think it it is totally fine. The visuals are incredible. There is some fun to be had. But I really wanted, like, this wild, crazy, colorful space romp where I could fall in love with these two characters. And I think they fell short in mm -hmm. those departments, which was a little unfortunate. I think part of my reaction to Valerian was just because I was so excited for that movie. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you're so excited and it doesn't meet those expectations, you're a little more disappointed. But it's, it's not a bad movie by any means. It just has certain shortcomings that make the overall experience, you know, not as engaging and fun as I would have liked it to have been. I have my eye on Girls Trip, though, because everyone I've seen it has had a good deal of fun with it. And I was really disappointed in Rough Night. I really wanted, you know, like a girl group kind of movie where you can go out and you have fun and you watch everything. And Rough Night was not much fun at all. So after I saw that, my eye immediately shifted to this. And sadly, I missed my screening this week. 
but I think I'm probably going to make time to catch it. Dunkirk has to come first because, I mean, Christopher Nolan, mm -hmm. that subject matter, everything I've seen from the movie thus far, just the way it's shot, and it is just, it's been high on my, like, most anticipated list of 2017 for forever, so that is top priority, but I probably will get around to seeing Girl Strip, mm -hmm. and I hear Tiffany Haddish is, like, a scene stealer in it. Uh, she's a scene stealer in real life, too. She's one of the best. Riley, Valerian, Girl's Trip, your mm. thoughts. Well, Mark, uh, I believe that I would go with Dunkirk. I mean, come on. If, if we're talking three <laughs> movies coming out like this, mm -hmm. hey, the, the one thing I want to do, I'm looking at the coming soon graphic that's over our studio right now, and I love the, the, like, the different movies that you can go see right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. You got Valerian, you got some, and look, Girls Trip is counter-programming. They, they are targeting a very specific audience that might not want to go see a war film or a sci-fi fantasy, so they might go to Girls Trip. But for me, I mean, come on, it's Christopher Nolan. It's something that I've heard wonderful things about. I have to see Dunkirk, and I do have to see Valerian sooner or later. I really want, I'm interested to see it, if anything, to support Luc Besson, and because I love The Fifth Element so much, I'm hoping that it can capture that magic, but I'm hearing, you know, Perry, when you talk about your review, I can kind of go, mm, okay. Mm. I've heard very, very mixed things, actually. When I'm on Twitter, when I'm listening to some of my colleagues on Twitter, Valerian is kind of, I mean, I've heard really great things, and then I've heard really bad things, and things kind of in the middle. For me, I gotta check it out. Um, Girls Trip, I'm glad to hear that uh, your friend is stealing the show. I think it's a stacked cast. Um, probably one of those movies that uh, my lady will probably wanna see, but I think we're gonna go for Dunkirk first, after Comic-Con. So when I'm on Twitter, I, I see the good things and the bad things you're talking about. Yeah. What's this middle ground you were saying where people were just kind of not say Perry. really having an opinion on anything? <laughs> no, I would say per Perry's <laughs> middle of the road for Valerian as far as the reaction. I think that is a good description of my review. Because uh, I heard, I mean, I, I read some scathing reviews of Valerian, wow. which I didn't like. Hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. surprising. Yeah. I mean, re really, there some parts are not great there is nothing to hate about that movie yeah. uh, six out of ten that's a 60 percent and where i come from that means you get a degree let's move on to buy <laughs> or sell this is the part of this show where i am going to present the crowd with a topic they will say whether we buy it or sell it and then i'll try to keep some order in there too so first up is a story that sylvester stallone yes sylvester stallone is going to be writing Creed 2. He's currently working on Finally. it right now, and they plan to shoot Creed 2, the follow-up to the smash hit critically and box office-wise Creed, next year. And Stallone also mentioned in this article, makes a good point of saying that he is not going to be involved in the new Rambo reboot at all, mm -hmm. but he does wish them the best. He's working on a Creed 2 project, and the rumors are that this Creed 2 project could have Adonis Creed, Michael B. Jordan, go up against some guy with the last name Drago, mm. and it could be Yvonne Drago's son. David Griffin is getting excited. Perry Nemiroff isn't so sure. Mark Riley, where do you stand? Oh, boy, big buy. It. It's a big yeah. buy for me. Not only is it a buy, it's a big buy because it's Creed 2. We've been waiting for some kind of announcement, and this is buried in an article on Deadline that was talking about the Rambo uh, reboot, and that he's not doing that, and it just kind of mentions off the side, going, oh, but he's working on Creed 2 right now. And Sly has gone on Instagram teasing, I mean, he photoshopped Michael B. Jordan's face on Carl Weathers' body facing Drago in Rocky IV, and I find that an, actually an, a very interesting take mm. on a story, because obviously I even, do we do spoiler alerts for a 20-year-old movie? I don't know. Uh, Ivan Drago I, and uh, Rocky IV? Yeah, Apollo dies. Apollo dies. <laughs> there it is. Spoiler gets, alert. Gets punched <laughs> out. <laughs> he gets punched out. He kills Creed's father. Throw so the damn town. So it's interesting to think what if, uh, you know, I don't necessarily like the son of Ivan Drago. It just seems like everybody's got a son in these later movies, like Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the like Game of Thrones. I must create offspring yeah. to stop the offspring of Apollo. I mean, <laughs> I find it interesting that. Uh, Adonis would have to go back and deal with not only his father and coming to terms with the father that left him, but dealing with the, the man that killed him. Mm. And I like that. That's an interesting story for me. But the big takeaway for me, a buy, is that Creed 2 is being worked on and they're looking to start production next year. 
that means we get it soon. I'm riding this wave of excitement right over to D. Griff. You got excited when I said Drago. Are you buying this story? I mean, you know, if, if we could change, you yeah. could change. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's yeah, just, that's a damn good Sly Stallone <laughs> ended the Cold War. Damn right. In that one movie. Down. Spoiler alert. Sorry. Um, <laughs> we know what would be interesting. Yeah, I think, of course, Drago is still around. So well, I assume, you know, he's still alive. So that's interesting, like Mark said, confronting the man who killed your dad. But yeah. it seemed like in the end of the movie, spoiler alert, he kind of, you know, he changes. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he, you know, he, he's like, to the end, or something like that, I think he says, like, in the last round. Like, like, he respects Rocky. He doesn't hate him anymore. I think he, like, helps lift him up at the end, you know. So maybe you have this reflective Drago actually seeks out Michael B. Jordan and, like, tries to apologize Ooh. to him. But then maybe he's also training somebody else, another Russian up-and-comer that mm-hmm. happens to be fighting him, and Drago's his trainer. I like that. That's cool. That's uh, all cool. It, it, Perry, it's worth speculating simply because uh, we know that Stallone and, and Lundgren are still pals. He, mm-hmm. Lundgren appeared in uh, the Expendables movies. They've worked together. Dolph Lundgren most recently of Shark Lake fame, but I'm sure that uh, he can get out of his contract for that sequel. <laughs> He's also been in this. Arrow. He's been great in Arrow this, this past oh, season. He? Yeah, he, he was the villain in, uh, in the last season of Arrow. So he was, and don't forget, he's going to be an Aquaman. Yeah. Dolph mm-hmm. Lundgren right. is yeah, an he's Aquaman. Busy. He's working. So. He's yeah. a working man. Or are you buying <laughs> this for Creed 2? I'm buying it. Is my body language that expressive that you could tell in one second that I was middle of the road on uh, the story? The short answer is yes. <laughs> um, I, lo- I love the story. I think that has mm. so much potential for the main character where it actually would kind of justify another movie about him. However, the only things that have me concerned about this story is the fact that it was buried in a deadline story. So, you know, I hone in on, oh my God, looking to film in 2018. It could come out in 2018, 2019. Mm. When Creed first came out and everybody was freaking out about it because they loved it so much, myself included, I expected to see a Creed 2 really, really soon. And I don't know if I should take that that sentence of this report so, so seriously, because I don't want to be sitting there waiting and like checking my watch for these two release date options and then it not happen. So I am just holding back my high hopes for this film just a little bit because until an official studio or some official press release comes out and says, Creed 2 is being worked on by these people and coming on this release date, you never know. The other thing that has me a little concerned is Ryan Coogler. He's got his hands full. Mm -hmm. I think somewhere in that report, it might have even have said that he's going to be too busy with Black Panther to jump in on this right now. And I don't know. I mean, there's many situations where someone else steps in and delivers a great sequel. I mean, we keep talking about Matt Reeves right now with uh, with Dawn and War for the Planet of the Apes. He did a great job following up after Rupert Wyatt. Perhaps they can find someone who could do the same thing with Creed, too. Mm -hmm. But, you know. After seeing Creed, my mind is, oh, I want Ryan Coogler to direct this. It's an interesting situation because I, I, I buy it overall because I'm such a fan of Stallone and the Rocky character. But if the premise is Stallone writing a story where Adonis Creed fights the son of Ivan Drago, I'm selling that. Because I just think that it it jumps the shark in a way that I don't think is necessary. Now, you could make a movie that proves me wrong and is great, but we're in a very different sa- situation than we were when Creed came out, because Creed was Ryan Coogler convincing Stallone that he should come back and be this mm-hmm. Rocky character again. So now Stallone is writing Creed 2, and he's going to have to be pitching this story to, to Coogler and to Jordan and to everybody else who, who needs or wants to be involved, where, hey, I think this is a good enough story. Now, personally, I have no problem with this movie coming out, and if it's not good, and if it does jump the shark or bomb the fridge, whatever the hell you want to call it, mm. I'd be okay with that. Because Creed was a great resurgence, and I have that movie forever. And then they get a little silly with it, that's fine, because I still get to see a boxing movie and make a lot of Yvonne Drago jokes, and I'm fine, and I can go home. But I just don't think that it's the right way to go. I love, love, love Dolph Lundgren coming back and playing that role, but it just seems a little too cookie cutter on the nose obvious to have him gain revenge against Drago's son like it, like the Drago struggle was more than just this mountain of a man it was a political struggle mm-hmm. that was between the United States and the USSR so without all that where I, I guess it's kind of back in the news now so mm. maybe you could have that we don't know which side our president is going to be on but I know that Ivan Drago having a son that is fighting Michael B. Jordan's character just doesn't seem like a a worthwhile premise to me it's a fine line for sure i mean it's definitely because when you got to rocky four you're just coming off of rocky three with thunder lips and mr t and it went a little bit darker obviously but with this you got to play it really straight you can't do that 
you could bring in today's landscape in this. You really could. That's an interesting story. I just look at the central story of he lost his father to this man. Mm -hmm. But I'm with you. I don't think it should be the son. I think if he's in it, I like the idea of him training somebody, but like I said, you right, you could be like Apollo's trainer, right? Yeah. Something like it, it, it. There is an interesting story there. I I trust in Sly. I'm also going to go out on a limb and say I might see Sly directing this. Mm. He might come in and direct this thing, which might be interesting. But I, I I'm with you as well. <laughs> That's going to make that pitch meeting pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just gotta, it's going to be gotta, interesting. I got though. it, guys. I'll I, take the whole thing. I got it. Coogler not coming back for this movie <laughs> would be would definitely be a bummer. It would take just a notch down of my excitement level. All right. Well, we'll wait and see how Sly's pitch to possibly himself goes and whether he's <laughs> looking in the mirror and in the corner of that mirror, he still has a picture of Yvonne Drago because he's training. Drago. Like he did. I like uh, that. God, I love that movie so, so, so much. <laughs> it's just hard to recapture that magic. All right. Our next topic is going to be something else that we might have some strong opinions about. That would be the running time for the new Dark Tower movie opening August 4th has been announced. This is per the British Federation of Sci. I'm not going to click on the article, but Collider.com is talking about it. So it's worth listening to the Dark Tower runtime. Time, it's only 95 minutes long. I said only. David, do you think I should have said only? Or should I have said few? It's only 95 minutes long. <laughs> Does this make you buy or sell the Dark Tower more? This kind of makes me go a little bit like a, hmm, you know, that's interesting. <laughs> um, I Runtime's always, well, it's fascinating. Like, so when uh, the runtime was announced for we're talking about Dunkirk, right? It's coming with a big movie comes big. It's like, you know, an hour and 46 minutes, hour and four, it's under two hours. Most war films which Christopher Nolan is not calling this a war film it's calling it a thriller it are two and a half you know these big you know operatic type movies so the fact that it's 95 minutes I hope that's a good thing I hope they didn't have to cut it down so much because everything else was just crap I hope they're like no we have a really solid 95 minutes and the pacing's fantastic you're going to be hooked the thing is you're going to be so hooked you're going to want to see more of these I mean because Stephen King what do you write eight books mm -hmm. or something yeah. like that like you're going to want to see more of these so I hope that's the case. I mean, just because a movie's a big epic, like a Lord of the Rings, doesn't have to be three, three and a half hours. So I'm fine with the 95-minute runtime if it's a quality 95 minutes, obviously. I hope they just have to cut it down because the rest was bad. It's mm. a huge buy for me as it stands here today because Dunkirk wasn't much more than 95 minutes. That was yeah. a pretty intense ride for me. I also think that if you make a movie and you say it's a two-and-a-half-hour movie and we've never seen it, that gets me a little nervous because mm. what in the hell deserves two-and-a-half hours? It certainly isn't a Transformers movie. Maybe The Dark Tower is two-and-a-half hours and you're in there and in minute 20 you're like, Oh, boy, I'm looking at my watch. But if it's 95 minutes and it's just a breezy ride, and I maybe am in the minority here, I just think that you can make a great story that is even on as epic of a scale as this purports to be from the trailers and make it 95 minutes. I think you can do it. I think that it's, it's totally plausible. It's happened in the past. Mm -hmm. It will happen again. Perry, am I crazy? No, I'm torn on this just because I tried to pick up the Dark Tower book and read it, and just one book. It is a very, very long books book. Books are hard to and read. And I'm in the very, <laughs> the, aren't they? Oh, there's there's some books. good ones that I could recommend that are not so hard to read and actually enjoyable. Do they have pictures and panels in them? I'll draw some pictures in the margins. <laughs> Would that help me sell it more? Um, well, the It book, for instance, I just have that on the brain because I'm finishing it right now. That is a 44-hour audiobook. You can't adapt yes. that entire thing into one movie because, no, you don't want to go in and see, oh, like a three-plus-hour runtime. But part of the reason that that audiobook is so great is because all those little side bits build atmosphere and backstory so well, and that makes the immediate events really riveting. Here, not only do I think... I, I've never read it, so I'm just guessing, but I imagine Stephen King had a similar writing style. And this is also a completely different type of scenario that's taken completely out of reality and I would think that a story like this would need some serious you know world building time mm -hmm. before you jump into it so when I heard that it was 95 minutes I was shocked is that necessarily a bad thing that oh like it's because x amount of percent of it was so bad so they had to cut it all out no that's not necessarily true but part part of what's going through my head right now and again this is probably just unfounded speculation on my part is I don't think that the promo campaign has hit as hard as it could have and I don't think anybody's really I mean we're talking about it because we talk about the stuff all the day but if you know all the day all, all the day, day long it's all the day we all talk. the day it's, long. Crazy. It, 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 it's only it's like what thing. like two weeks it, out no one's really talking exactly. about it exactly and like I was yeah. just chatting with friends that don't work in this industry and nobody really cares about mm -hmm. the dark tower so part of my mind goes to oh well if it's only 95 minutes long 
more people might be willing to check it out and give it a shot versus if it was two and a half hours long. Were you at a certain bachelorette party chatting with friends who were not in this Quite industry? Quite possibly. Uh, and I don't think any of them cared about the Dark Tower, but uh, they, mm. they have very different taste. R Riley, I think you might care about the Dark Tower a little bit. What does this running time do to you? Uh, yeah, well, if you're going to ask me if I buy or sell, can I say that I'm window shopping with this <laughs> right now? Because, <laughs> look, on one hand, you have uh, eight books or something like that, a lot, a lot of source material. But what we do know is that, as, as far as the source material, this takes place after. It's like a sequel. So to the books, it picks up the story. I don't know. I only got through the first book, read it a long, long time ago. I can't remember. So I kind of, I, I listen to you, Perry, when you say not a lot of people are interested, maybe not the people in our industry that are talking about this. All the day, is that what you said? All, all the day. All the day. All, all the, the day live long. long day. All, all the, the live, live long, long day. day. So, yeah, thank you. Work on the yeah maybe that's gonna put some more butts in, in the seats, right? Because it's a shorter movie. Uh, you have some really great effects. The trailers are pretty good. For me though, I'm a little, I, I worry about the actual movie doing well in theaters because it's been pushed back. There was a long wait for that first trailer. Everybody was, all the diehard fans were like, where's that trailer? Why don't we just have a poster and nothing? And we're creeping up on the release date and now we're here and it's 95 minutes. Okay, I, I, I can't really buy or sell it. I just think I need to see the movie. And if, um, if it felt rushed, if it mm. didn't land for me, then I would say, man, I would have sold that road uh, run time. I wanted a longer movie, but if it's nice and brisk and it's there and it really packs a punch and it was satisfying, then I buy that the runtime was right on the money, but it, it's hard to, to tell just from this report. I also okay, want well, to do if, it well for Idris too. Like that's what I'm thinking. Cause this is like, yeah. a, like cause when you watch the trailer, his name comes first. It's Idris Elba, yeah. followed by Matthew McConaughey. So, uh -huh. I mean, I want this to do well for Idris. Because Idris, I mean, he's not hurting. He's doing well. Again, he's in the Luther they're shooting. He's in the Thor movies. He's fine. But in terms of a leading man in movie, I'd love to see him. I'd love to see this do well. I want to see him in more things. I think it would be great, and I'm going to walk into that store and buy the movie for 95 minutes, because, damn it, 95-minute movies are movies, too. Uh, you know, you guys don't have a <laughs> sidebar, so you're not sure where the hell we're going with this show, and I'm just going to tell you, we got one more topic, then we're going to move on to Mailbag. Our last topic in Buy or Sell is we have our very first trailer for The Disaster Artist. Mm. That is the movie based on the famous or infamous film The Room, Tommy Wiseau's masterpiece. It was a cult <laughs> film that is actually, more often than not, known as the worst film ever made the trailer has just come out the film opens in december and also stars dave franco seth rogan allison breeze zach efron josh hutcherson jackie weaver ari grainer jason manzoukas and of course james franco as tommy was so perry bye yes. i loved this i found this absolutely delightful and i think it's the perfect way to start your promo campaign because I love trailers that let you just experience a scene, and that's exactly what this was. And I just sat there, I watched what happened for X amount of minutes, and I left. And then I left a little more, and you left a little more. And it has a really great ending to it. It makes me want to see more. And you guys probably know, I just love anything that explores the behind the scenes and the mm -hmm. making of the movie. And one thing that really caught my eye in the synopsis for this when I first saw it is that the first line is, a delightful tribute to the joy and madness of making movies. Mm. That right there is what I want to see in this film. I want something to show me what it's like to, you know, have problems on a set, but approach it in, in more so of a, like not, oh God, like we wasted all this money, let's be sad and miserable about it and hate each other, but almost like a romp kind of feeling where I can have a laugh at their expense. And then, mm -hmm. you know, watching this, uh, this trailer slash clip kind of thing, it does make me want to go back and watch The Room again. And I think that's the effect that a movie like this is going to have, where you can watch The Room and then you can watch The Disaster Artist and have even more fun because you've watched them both together. Yeah, it's a buy for me, too, for one of the reasons that Perry pointed out is that if you're talking about being a tribute to the madness of how hard it is to make a movie, that's certainly what you get with this trailer. And I'm a guy who's never seen The Room. I never really cared to see the worst movie ever made. I saw the clip that they that they reference in here, and it did make me laugh. Then watching this trailer made me laugh a lot. But, David, it is such a fine line between just making fun of somebody and kind of picking on somebody mm -hmm. and then actually just nailing the an absurd tone. Very few movies have been able to do that without 
about either not going deep enough or going way too hard on somebody. A movie I point to often that I think did it successfully is Windy City Heat, which not a lot of people may have seen, but it's a great cult classic. I think this has the chance to do that because this first trailer, I think, hit the right note for me. How about you? Yeah, I, I definitely buy this. I think you have, and I like you have never seen uh, The Room, is what it's called. Yeah, I guess we got to yeah, watch it room. together. We have to watch it, but I remember not I was at. Room, the Room. Right. The room room was the one with <laughs> Allison and Brie. No, Brie Larson. Larson. Brie Larson. This one does have Allison Brie. Brie right? Yeah, yeah. We got the Brie part right. <laughs> we got Chief. Um, Walton but I remember Goggins. I, Wal Walter Goggins. Walter Goggins. Walter Goggins. Yeah, all, all the live long day. But when I was at uh, Stan Lee's Kamikaze Con out here in LA, I remember walking by a booth. There was this guy with this long black hair. There was copies of a DVD or something. There's all these people around him. And I said, my friend, I'm like, who's, who's that guy? He was like, you never seen The Room? I'm like, no. That's a duress guy from The Room. And mm -hmm. I was like, what is that? It's the worst movie ever made. I'm like, why are so many people around him? Because he's made like this living off his movie being so bad. But I think Franco and these guys and. I think they're going to come at this from a way you have to acknowledge the other side. Mm -hmm. You have to find some kind of like, you have to be able to relate to the other side. You can't just completely bash, you know, this movie. Or else I don't think it would be a, a relatable. You wouldn't enjoy it. So I think they're going to come at this in a balanced way that I think we can all enjoy. I'm buying it. I mean, I don't know much about it. So I'm just guessing from the trailer, but this looks great. Three buys. It's early yeah. morning here on Wednesday. We're about to go to San Diego. Riley, tell me you're not going to be a sourpuss. Ah, sorry, guys. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm. I'm buying the oh, hell out of it. Yeah. Are you kidding you me? Been, I know. I thought you were faking, uh, and then you kept going, and then I was out, and yeah, then you got me Yeah, back in. no, what I, what I need you guys to do is if there is a screening of The Room, you have to go see it with an audience. Uh, for you L.A. natives, you know of the old Lemley 5 that was on the corner of Crescent Heights and Sunset. Mm -hmm. I saw a screening there with a packed house where that man showed up, not James Franco, but Tommy Wiseau shows up for a Q&A afterwards, and we threw spoons at him, okay? You Why'd you have spoons? Were they plastic? Yeah. There is a, the, for some odd reason, in this movie, The Room, there are shots of spoons everywhere. Like, <laughs> hovering shots of spoons that just kind of are recycled because they didn't shoot enough footage, so they just kind of cut things in there, like spoons. It's ridiculous. It is the most ridiculous movie you've ever seen, it is hilarious. I went, I watched this trailer, laughed my ass off, and then went back and watched a YouTube video compiled of all the funny scenes from the room and remembered that midnight July evening, maybe 10 years ago, very fondly, because it was one of those, it's the worst movie ever made. It really is. And you just can't help but laugh wow. because this guy, he doesn't want you to believe that he made a bad movie. He wants you to believe that this was on purpose, that he did this on purpose. And it is so hilarious to, th to see what the team of James Franco, and now I didn't know Seth Rogen was in it. I, this might be just a cameo as a director, who knows? But that team doing this based on the book, that is very true. There was 67 takes for him to remember the line. They needed cue cards for Tommy because he couldn't remember his lines. And I just can't wait to see the madness that is making the films like you touched upon, Perry. But th this, it's, it, I cannot wait. This December cannot come soon enough to see this movie. Yeah. Oh, I thought you Why had something to add. Why did we come to me? No, yeah. no you know. totally bought I was like, yeah, what? Did I that. say something? Yeah. yeah. You were like this the whole the whole time Riley's talking. You're just like this, and then you go like this. <laughs> I don't like, know. I was like, like you were in the ready <laughs> position. Back. I thought you had yeah, something what's, else to What's I'm the deal, ready Perry? I'm to go to Comic Con. I'm yeah. just so excited. Okay, oh then my we're, God. we're almost ready to gas up the van and have cops to drive us. But before we do that, <laughs> I want to remind you guys that <laughs> you are subscribed right now if you're watching this to Collider Videos YouTube channel. And all Comic Con Live, we're going to have a bunch of breaking news stories starring a lot of the people you see in front of you right now. You guys can check all that stuff out. And we're going to have movie talk live that we're taping Thursday is going to air on this channel. Friday during our movie talk slot, our normal 11 a.m., 10 a.m. PST. I don't know what time we work here, but it's going to be up on works. Friday. 10 a.m. works. Let's yeah. get to a mailbag, and then let's get me some nerd rope at the first day and p.m. we come across <laughs> on the 5 southbound. <laughs> here we go with mailbag. Dane Rutledge writes, hey, Collider crew. Boy, are Mark's eyebrows great. Big fan. Thanks so much for taking the time to answer our questions. I'm really looking forward to your coverage of Comic-Con because I can't make it to San Diego. We got you covered, Dane. My question is this. What should we expect from Warner Brothers and Marvel this year? I know Marvel did not release many of the trailers after last year's panel, but with the success of Wonder Woman and lukewarm responses to Guardians of the Galaxy, will Marvel need to release anything in order to prove that they didn't just lose the war with DC? War. Thanks again, war. Dane from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. 
Well, fear not, Dane. I have a feeling that this year both DC and Marvel are going to make a big splash at Comic-Con and also show us a lot of this stuff that they showed Hall H. So I think that if you're there in South Dakota and you're hanging out, you're going to get to see some pretty cool stuff. With Marvel, I would make a good bet that you get to see a new Thor Ragnarok trailer. I think you might see some new Black Panther trailers. And I think you might see that Infinity War teaser that came out this past week at D23. I hope for y'all's sake. I hope for your sake. God, I hope. I can't keep this goodness inside anymore. Then we move on to the DC side of the ledger. And I have no idea. I think definitely we'll see a new Justice League trailer. And I think mm -hmm. it's going to be awesome. I cannot wait to see it. I think Joss Whedon could be there. I think Zack Snyder could be there. Patty Jenkins. I think they could all come out, do a nice presentation. We are hearing that James Wan is going to be there with some Aquaman footage. I don't know that that gets out to the public. I think that might be more of a wait and see. Could be a teaser trailer for Aquaman. We would all know. But I think that a lot of the stuff, and certainly the announcements, but more importantly, the footage that you're dying to see, I think a lot of it's going to get out there. Mm -hmm. How about you, David? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think because they already showed uh, the D23, they already showed the uh, Avengers Infinity War footage, I think we're for sure going to release a trailer. But I don't think it's going to be one of those things where they'll show it to the audience and hold it for a while. I think it's going to come out that same day. Now, maybe some mm -hmm. of the other trailers, like from DC, Justice League trailer, I think they'll release right away. Maybe the Aquaman footage, they may hold on to. Maybe it'll be like uh, the Suicide Squad footage that we saw a few years back that wasn't supposed to come out, mm. but it did. It was leaked. Maybe they'll hold on to that and they'll keep that. Because they have to keep something special for the audience because there are people waiting in line for hours and hours. And I mean, I think if you do do that, you kind of deserve to, you know, I think you deserve some exclusive footage. But I think we're going to see the Infinity War trailer. The whole world's going to be able to see that. For yeah. Sure. I, and, and we talked about this uh, on Movie Talk, I think, earlier this week, where it's like, you know, so our fans that waited in line all night do they deserve to see some extra stuff yeah, yes so. yes they certainly do and i think yeah. that if you make the effort to get down there not everybody has the financial means or the time to get into hall h but i think that there is some extra goodies there for just the hall h crowd for the rest of us perry what can we expect well first of all the this little war that's being referenced right mm -hmm. there there is no war i understand anymore, no. that mm -hmm. the dceu and the mcu are competing in a sense to make the most amount of money at the box office, but it really is still a superhero cinematic universe and the success of one could mm. really amplify another. If one crashes and burns, it could affect the other. So it isn't necessarily butting heads the entire time. So, and I most certainly don't think Marvel is in a position now that Wonder Woman was a success that, oh, like it has to catch up and prove a point. I think they're both perfectly sound properties. And this is just a great opportunity they have to showcase properties that they have that are coming out in the near future. I want that Infinity War trailer so freaking badly. Yeah. I definitely think that they are going to screen it again, and then I think it's going to be one of those scenarios where, let's say they screen it again at the beginning of the panel, and then it drops online mm. minutes later because I want it, so I'm just going to think it's going to happen because maybe I could will it into existence because I can't stand the fact that I haven't seen it. It's driving me off my mind. Um, Thor, Black Panther, Ant-Man and the Wasp. I think those are mm -hmm. the three priorities. They should be the three priorities. We haven't seen very much from Thor or Black Panther, so there is tons of opportunity to show us something else. Hopefully they're all going to be there. I'd be shocked if they all weren't there. This is the time to promote next year's movies. That's what's going to happen there. And for Warner Brothers, I mean, based on what they're talking about you know, they also have Ready Player One and Blade Runner in the mix. So Steven that, Spielberg going to be there. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's a that's a big, big deal. If you're going to have Steven Spielberg on the panel, Ready Player One should have a certain amount of that panel time. So I think that the DCEU might get a little less stage time than Marvel will just because it has to make room for those other two movies. But, you know, the, the cast of Justice League is going to be here. That Now is the time to push Justice League. We could, maybe we'll even see a scene. I want to mm. see a scene. And then that story we were talking about earlier where they dated two other things, I don't think that that just happened to happen at the beginning of this, the, at the beginning of San Diego mm -hmm. Comic Con week, I feel like that news dropped because they are going to announce something. They're going to lock it in. Could mm -hmm. be seen a slate. I think it's a it's a done it, it, print ship lock deal that Steven Spielberg gets a standing ovation when he comes on stage at Hall yeah. H. Riley. I know maybe nobody around here loves these properties more than you when it comes to Marvel and DC movies. Unfortunately, <laughs> we are out of time. So that's all we have for today. <laughs> now, of course, we're going to go to Mark Riley. What's your oh take? Oh my God, you scared me. Well, okay, <laughs> I'm going to break this down because. I thought I, I, I see something happening at Comic-Con with these big studios. If you go back a couple years, when Warner Brothers released Suicide Squad footage or that trailer that was only for Comic-Con mm -hmm. and it leaked, 
the the repercussions of that was the following year they released the Justice League look, and that was made specifically for Comic Con, and then they put it online mm -hmm. immediately after. So I think that is the new thing that Warner Brothers is doing. So we're gonna see Justice League. Absolutely, it's out in November. We're gonna see a trailer or a scene. We're gonna see something big from there. I would even put money on same deal as Justice League, Aquaman footage, mm -hmm. either a teaser, a sizzle, a scene, something that will then release online soon after. Again, the, the announcements, yes, it's too close to Comic-Con. They're gonna announce these two movies that we were speculating on at the top of the show. As for Marvel, I'm a little worried. Here's why. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, they played a huge trailer in Hall H last year. They had Ravagers running out. They had all this huge stuff going on, and none of that footage made its way online. None of it. We finally got a trailer months later. So I'm a little worried that the Avengers footage is only going to be shown no. at D23 and then at <laughs> Comic-Con. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm not going to be in Hall H this year, it seems. I'm going to be in there for certain things, but I don't think I'm going to be in there for that because of work schedule. So I'm worried that it, they're not going to do it. I hope I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. I, 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 everybody is saying that they, they should release it because it was D23. I am really, really hoping they do too. I know. Thanos throwing a moon or something. I don't know. Killing I got to see that. But then also last year what Marvel did, they did a sizzle reel for Spidey. Spider-Man Homecoming, they made something special just for the Comic-Con crew. Never aired again. We never saw that again until the first Spider-Man trailer. So the one thing I do believe we'll get is Thor Ragnarok and Black Panther. Those are the next releases in the order cycle. So I think you're going to get a great big presentation for Ragnarok, a big trailer. It's going to go online. Same with Black Panther. But I don't know. I'm 50-50 on the Infinity War footage getting out there just based on what Marvel did the year before. I hope I'm wrong. Harbinger of doom, Mark. I should have hey. cut the show off. I should have just gone like, well, like what my plan was going right. to be. Yeah, you should have cut it off, man. I feel like I was I'm going sorry. off to San Diego with a pep in my step, and now I'm just like, oh. Yeah, well, you, you can, can come hang out with me in Ballroom 20. We can go We're gonna, we can go to the Outlander <laughs> Outlander panel. We can watch I, that. I like some Outlander. Yeah, Outlander's okay, good, right? That, yeah. that doesn't make That's up footage. for Infinity That's War important. footage, but okay. Yeah, it's not Thanos throwing a moon? <laughs> Outlander footage. Hey. Claire and Jamie making out. You no, like know. Two people you to never put a know. smile on your face during a rainy day. It is Perry Nemra and David <laughs> Griffin. For David, for Perry, and all of Sioux Falls, <sighs> South Dakota, we really hope that Marvel releases that Infinity War teaser. Me too. And we will not let Riley watch it because he said <laughs> mean things about whether they were going to have it come out or not. Hey, that's all the time we have. The I'm getting word that the bus is now gassed up and Copster is going to be our Susan Day. He's driving this whole big family <laughs> down the road. We're going to be on the I five wave to us we're all in the car slash van mark riley where can the kids find you you can find me not watching the avengers infinity trailer Ever. i hope it does you're not gonna Man, see the movie either that 50 50 uh, here's hoping it happens and i get to be there and i get to see it with the rest of you when it drops but find me at riley around on twitter and instagram i'll be doing updates all weekend long for comic con here with these kids at Collider Video. She can turn the world on with her smile. Perry Nemiroff, where can we check you that out? That was really nice. I know the <laughs> reference, though, obviously. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm. Not... <laughs> it's just one of those days. What's that from? It's one of the. That reference. Who can turn the world on with her smile? Oh, I thought I was like. Yeah. You're going to make it after uh, Mary really? Tyler Moore. No, I don't watch that. Oh, man. I thought oh, wait. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. They don't have a Mary Tyler Moore panel in Ballroom <laughs> yeah, 20. Sorry. If, if it's not in Ballroom 20, I don't know the reference. I'm sorry. Oh, and I was afraid I was going to get shipped. I am Drax. Like, I will let nothing go over my head. I'm um, I will catch it. Yeah. Well, on that note, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram sharing lots of stuff from Comic-Con all the day. I hope to meet some of you guys there. See you soon. All right. As long as we got each other, David, we got the world spinning <laughs> right in our face. Where can the kids find you? You can find me in ba Ballroom 20 all day, every day. <laughs> at Griffin DE on Instagram and Twitter. Just come say hi. I'll be there with some brightly colored shirts. Not this shirt, but some brightly colored <laughs> ones. Yeah. I am merely Mark Ellis Live. Yeah, it was a Growing Pains reference. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Thanks to the crew for getting up early and helping us tape. We're going to go grab a protein shake and see you guys at Comic-Con San Diego. Choot, choot. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.